before we go further, there's a tosis before on the Zayma days, which would like to discuss them. Originally, it started off by saying, how do we know Shchutei Chutz? That Chulish Nishba Azora, that if you take a non-consecrated animal and you slaughter in the Azora, how do we know it's, it's Yisura Hamno? So Moret said, we learn it from Shchutei Chutz. Just as Sheli Bishaloch is also that if you take a korban and you slaughter it outside the sanctuary, it's, you're not permitted to benefit from it. So Shaloch Bishali, when you slaughter yours and mine, you're not permitted to benefit from it. That's how the Gemara started off. Right? Shchut Echutz is an explicit pasuk in the Torah. You take a korban, you slaughter it outside the Beis Hamikdash, it's a Torah violation, you're not permitted to benefit from it. So the Gemara drew an analogy. Just as when you slaughter mine in your domain, Outside of the Beis Hamikdash, you're not permitted to benefit from it. So when you slaughter yours in my domain, you're not permitted to benefit from it. Right? That's what the Gemara said. The Gemara says, no, it's not comparable. If you shchutei chutz, if you do shchutei chutz, you slaughter a carbon outside of the Beis the liability is kores. So because the liability is kores, it's so severe, that's why you're not permitted to benefit from it. But maybe if you slaughter the chulin in the sanctuary, maybe you are permitted. Or maybe it's even permitted to eat. Right? That's, that was the Gemara. Therefore, the Gemara started to come on to Psukim. Psukim. Okay. So Tosis, that, so Rashi, how does he learn? Rashi says something interesting. Why is Sheli B'Shaloch Osemano? Even it's Chayv Kor, where do we say that you're not proving the benefits from Shkut Echutz? So Rashi says, and Tosis says, take a look at the third Tosis in the Zion of Beis. Pirsh B'Kuntris. Osemano Fish Elem Mi Yatireim. The cave on the hook to shoe because what would be permitted? What it would, would it, what would permit it to you? Cave on the hook to shoe. Ainu yichol lios mutorim el yedei zrika. Materis bekochim when you scatscrate something. What allows you to eat the meat? Right, the zrika, the sprinkle of blood on the mizveach. So over here by shchut echutz, there's no such thing as you sprinkle the blood. So therefore, what has to be the status of the carbon? It retains the same status. You're not permitted to eat it. You're not permitted to benefit from it. Just as, as what before in the Beis Hamikdash, until you do this Rico, you're not permitted to benefit from it. So when you do it outside the Beis Hamikdash, now it has no relevance to this Rico. So what's the matir? So what, what's going to change its status? Nothing. So since you don't have Zrika, therefore that's the reason why it's Osabano. That's how Rashi's learning. Here. That's 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 olive base. That's olive base. Until you zurich the dam, you moil. Me'ilah means you're not permitted to benefit from it. So therefore, outside the base of Migdash, that you, you're not able to be Zorik the Dam, therefore you're going to be Moel. Moel means Yisrael no. So just as mine in your domain, because you don't have the release of Zeriko, and that's why it's, it retains its Yisrael no status, identically when you do yours by me, in my domain, also it assumes that forbidden status. So that, of course, is no comparison. This is Kores there, that's not Kores. So over here, Hiksha Ram, Hiksha Ram, a Rabbeinu Moshe. So he asks, the Chmokein, Shezrika Motzim De Milo, Afilu Hoche Amridon. It's true. Zrika, when you Zorik the Dam in the, in the sanctuary, the Azora, that releases it from Milo. Before you Zorik the Dam, you eat the meat, you're Moel. After you Zorik the Dam, you eat the meat, you're not Moel. But he says, Afilu Hoche Amridon, Kochim Shemesu. What happens if you consecrate an animal, the animal dies? Yotsu midei milo. The Gemara says a milo. If it dies, you're not moel any longer. Ava gav shol nizrik adam. So if the animal dies, you, it wasn't zrika adam. Correct? So if this is not zrika adam, so if that's the case, you should you should you should be moel. According to Rashi, Rashi says, what's the reason why when you slaughtered outside the Azora, shul techotz why you're not permitted to benefit from it? Because what was its status initially? Yisrael no. It's milo. So, and what releases from, from Milo, Zrika, so if it's Shrut Echutz, there's no Zrika, it retains its forbidden status. So why, by, so Tos is asking, but if you have Kochim Shemesh, so an animal is consecrated, it dies. You benefit from its carcass, right? You take it, you feed it to your dog. You're not Moel. Why aren't you Moel? It never had a release from what? From its original consecrated status. But we're going Rashi. Rashi says, what's the reason why you're not be permitted to benefit from it? Why, when you slaughter my korban in your domain, why is it also about no? 
Because what releases it from the law, from benefit, Zerika. And since you don't have Zerika outside the base of Migdosh, therefore there was nothing to release it, therefore it retains its forbidden status. So we're equating forbidden status with Mila. That's Rashi. So he says, so an animal that dies, what released it from its forbidden status? And yet, if you benefit from it, you're not mowing. There was no, it doesn't make it, so what released it here? Why is this animal worse than an animal that dies? No, no, no. No, no, no. Let's talk Shkut. We want to draw an analogy from, from Shkut Echutz. Right? Let's talk about Shkut Echutz. Why is Shkut Echutz Rashi? And why is it also about? Why is, we're going with Svara. Why is my, at my carbon in your domain, why is it also about no? So Rashi says, of course, there was never, there's nothing to release it. It had a consecrated status. What released it? Therefore, it retains its forbidden status. So he asks, so if an animal dies, what released it? And yet the aloch is, you're not boy. So, but it's not Zerika. It's not Zerika. It's not because you can't be Zora Casey. Even though there's no Zerika, it should be permitted. Just this Kochim Shemesu. That's Tosis, that's Rabbeinu Moshe's question. So therefore, maybe you should even be able to eat it. By the animal dies, it's nevelo. But over here, maybe what? Maybe you should be able to eat. You should be able to eat shchutechutz. You did the wrong thing. But maybe you should even be able to eat it. So why can't you eat it? So why is mine in your domain not permitted, even to the degree of Yisra no? We'll get back to Rashi. Just as when you slaughter mine in your domain, it's us. Meaning, it doesn't, you cannot take that animal, put it on his back any longer, to absolve the one who brought, who originally consecrated the animal. Just as it becomes an ineffective carbon. It cannot absolve the person. What's the value of a non consecrated animal? Eating and benefiting. Correct? That's the analogy. But let's get back to the questions he's asking on Rashi. Right? Now, we, ha we had, um, the Gemara says that if you, you sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach, there was a drainage system that would go out to a, a valley and they would sell the blood as fertilizer. So really, and the gardeners, they would pay for it, and they would redeem the blood. So the Gemara says it's purely rabbinical. On a Torah level, it needs no redemption. Why? Because it's nasa mitzvoson. Once the mitzvah has been expended, it reverts back to a non consecrated status. That's called nasa mitzvoson. Because the mitzvah was done. So Rosh says, why, why if when the mitzvah is done, does it release it? Does the transition go back to Chumin? He says, when you consecrate something, what is it, what's its classification? Kot Hashem. It's reserved and ex exclusive to be used for Hashem's usage. Once you've done the mitzvah, it, that was accomplished, therefore the transition goes back to Chumi. Because the, oh, it was the exclusivity of its usage, that's what prohibited it. But now that it was used, Nasa Mitzvah, it reverts back to what? To an ordinary status. Therefore the blood, once you did the Zerik on the Mizbeach, it was accomplished. So therefore, the dam, the blood, assumes a non-consecrated status. But out of respect, it's not covered. Use it as fertilizer to, for ordinary usage. Rabbinically, you have to redeem it onto, onto money. Okay? That's the, that's the rationale. Okay? So now, you have an animal, you consecrate it. Now it dies. What's the reason why it had value? Of course, it can be utilized, Hashem. But now that it's died, it dies. What's its value? It can't be used for Hashem any longer. So that's the reason why you're not moel any longer. That's why you're not moel. Here you have an animal that you slaughtered, that was consecrated to Hashem. It's the same idea. You slaughtered it outside the Azorah. So now, because you did it, you did something which invalidates it, because shchutei chutz, you can't put on the Mizbech any longer. The moment you take it outside the, 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 the Mishkan, or the you slaughter it, it becomes invalidated. So therefore, the question is, he's asking, so it should be like Kochim Shemesu? You shouldn't be moel. You know, the answer is what I, what I think, that Mila maybe won't be moel. You're not going to be moel. Rashi is speaking about the me'il aspect. 
What releases it to be permitted to you? The what? The Zrika. Since you don't have Zrika, so therefore it attains its forbidden status. So he says, over there. So what about when the animal dies? Why aren't you at Moel? Rashi's not talking about Moel. Rashi's talking about to, to release it, to, to permit it. Kotshin Shemei is also you're not permitted to benefit from. You're not permitted. Over there was spe purely speaking about the meal aspect. Something that could be used for Hashem, if you benefit, you moil. Mila has a consequence. You pay value, a fifth, and you have to bring a korban. When shchudei chutz, he doesn't mean to release it to be permitted. doesn't mean that. The release, when, when you're not moil any longer, it becomes permitted to eat when you're not moil. Right? So he's asking, what releases it? Is it like kotshin shemei? It is like kotshin shemei. Kotshin shemei, you're not permitted to benefit from the liability is not, is not Mila, but are you permitted to benefit from it? You're not permitted. So you have to make a differentiation. So what about why Nas Mitzvah? So Nas Mitzvah was there, it's been utilized for its original purpose. Now it, it, it wasn't utilized. It was designated and it can't, can't it was never used for its purpose. So therefore it, reta it retains its Kedusha. It retains Kedusha. But it's not Mila. Mila is only a functional Kedusha that could be utilized for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And therefore, since it cannot be used, therefore you're not Moel. Falls, they're not moil. Okay, that's that's the, seemingly that's what Rashi would have to learn. That's what the Gemara says. The Gemara says it's not comparable. No, but it's a svara. As you do mine and yours, it's not permitted. So, when you do uh, when you do yours and mine, it's also not permitted. So Gemara says it's not comparable. There, it's it's kores. Okay, let's go further in the Gemara. The Mishnah says, what happens you take Yisrei HaNor, you sell them, you take Bosom Cholov, you sell Bosom Cholov. Right, you work in a, in a McDonald's, right, you own it, franchise. Now you take the money, and you take the money that you sold the hamburger, cheeseburger, and you want to make a woman with it. So the cheeseburger, let's say it's Yisrei HaNor, the McDonald's cheeseburger, right? It was made with kosher meat, so it's no, nobody argues. It's Basu Mecholov. And you take that money, and you marry a woman with it. So the Mishnah says, she's, she's Mekodeshes. Why, why are you Mekodeshes? Maybe the money assumes the same status as the Yisriyano. Menolon. How do we know that the, the exchange of the Yisriyano doesn't assume the same status as the Yisriyano? Medegoli Rachmona Bavurus Kochovim. Now what happens if you have an idolatrous object? and you sell it. The money assumes the identical status as the idolatry itself. Why? Because it says in the Torah, kamahu. The exchange of Avodah Zorah is considered Cherem. Right? Kamohu. Takes, assumes Cherem means something which is like abominated, identically as the idolatry itself. Anything which comes about as a result something which is a result of the Avodah Zorah, it assumes the identical status of the Avodah Zorah. So just as Avodah Zorah is a surah, no, you're not permitted, the exchange for the Avodah Zorah, which a derivative of the Avodah Zorah, whatever it causes, was also also. Mechal, so what's the inference of that? The Torah has told this by, by Avodah Zorah, the Holy Surah Shabbat Torah Shoru, that the exchange for any other Avodah Zorah, anything but Avodah Zorah, you're permitted to benefit from what it brought about. So Mar says, Vinay let me know. So what do we learn from Avodah Let that be the model. Remember, Tzino. We find by Avodah that you're not permitted to what? Anything which it brings about assumes its status, and it's Yusra no. So maybe by other Yusra no, Basim Cholov, all the cases that we have in the Mishnah, also, what it brings about, you should not be able to benefit from. Vinay let me know. And that Mar says, What's the halacha? You have the uh, produce of, of shvius. It's a medical shvius. So the halacha is there's such a thing known as kedusha shvius. It has a certain degree of sanctity. It has to be utilized a certain way. And also there's a shasabir. There's a certain time when it comes a certain part of the year. You have to you have to destroy all the, the produce of shvius. You're not permitted to benefit from any. The law has to be destroyed. So and what is what if you sell shvius 
the money that you the, the, the money that you receive for selling shvius, what's the what what status does it, does it assume? It assumes the identical kedusha of the shvius. That's what it assumes. So we see over there that the exchange. But if in fact Avodazur would be the model case to learn from, we know there's nothing superfluous in the Torah. So what is to have to write again? That the shvius, if you sell the shvius, it assumes the proceeds assume the same status as the shvius. So it's unnecessary. We were able to draw that from where? From Avodah Zorah. Right? That Chalip, that it's called Chalipi Avodah Zorah, Chalipi Shvius, the exchange, assumes the same status. So that, that it went and it had to write it in regard to Shvius, tells us that this is the exception rather than the rule. These two cases are the exception to the rule rather than the rule. The rule is, you sure I know if you sell it, the proceeds, you're permitted to benefit from. When you have two psukim, stating the same principle where one could have been learned out from the other, you're not able to draw from one because if you could, the second one wouldn't have been necessary to write because otherwise it's superfluous. The Gemara will speak about it. Avodos Kochovim. So where do we find Avodos Kochovim? That what? That, chal, that the exchange assumes the same status as the, as the proceeds, as the Avodos are itself, because it says, So we just stated, Shviyas Mahi. Where do we find in the Torah that Chalipe Shviyas, that the, what Shviyas brings about, whatever derivative Shviyas assumes its status, it says regarding Shviyas, it says, Yovel He, this is the Jubilee, which has the same status as as the sabbatical year, Yovel he Kodesh Ti Elohem. Okay? It's Yovel, it's considered Kodesh. Kodesh means consecrate Ti Elohem. Ma Kodesh, Tophis is Domov. Let's you have something that's consecrated and you want to redeem it. I consecrate this table, and now I take, I want to use this table. So what do you do? You take money, you say the Kedush of the table transfers onto the money. Correct? Okay? So just as ma kodesh tofes is domov, ashvis tofes is domel. So just as when you want to redeem kodesh, the money assumes the same status as the kodesh, as the original kodesh. So if you want to redeem perish shvius, you, you purchase it, the money assumes the status of the shvius. So Mar asks, but what's the halacha if you re I redeem the table? I consecrate a table, now I, re I redeem it. The table now becomes ordinary. But perish shvius, that's not the case. The Perishvius retained the status of Shvius. And in addition, the money that you purchased the Shvius with, or you receive on behalf of the Shvius, assumes the identical status of Shvius. Ima Kodesh Tovis Domo, Yotzel Chulin. Something you consecrate when you exchange it, you redeem it. The original consecrated object becomes ordinary, goes to Chulin. And the money becomes Kedusha. Av Shvius Tovis Domo, Yotzel Chulin. Why don't we say the same thing? You have produce of Shvius, the one who originally sells it, the money he receives, that should, the Kedusha should be transferred onto that, and the fruits should be, should be ordinary fruit, should not have. Talmud Lomar, Tia, Bava it says, Kodesh Tia Lochem, what is Shvius? It's Kodesh Tia, Bava Yoseteh, mean that the Shvius always retains its status of Shvius, that cannot be removed. Ketzad, what's an example of this? Listen, Interesting halacha. Lokach peris the peris shvius bosser. Person does a barter. He has produce of shvius, and he goes to the butcher. He says, "I'll give you ten pounds of potatoes for five ounces of meat." So what? So the the, the produce remains shvius. What about what what happens to the meat? Because the meat is the exchange for peris shvius. The meat assumes kedusha shvius. Elu ve'elu mizbarim b'shviyus. So when it comes to this man abir, which is after Hanukkah time, just as the fruit, the produce of shviyus has to be destroyed, the meat which has the kedusha shviyus has to be destroyed. What happens in the interim? What do you do? Right. Bebaser dogim. What happens now? He takes that meat that originally has kedusha shviyus and he exchanges it for fish. Exchanges it for fish. Yotzer baser v'nichnusu dogim. The Kedusha now goes off the meat and goes onto the fish. Why? Because the meat is not the origin of the Kedusha. Which Kedusha cannot be removed? That's the produce themselves. Of course, that's Baba Yosoye. But now when it transfers onto something else, that could be transferred off of it. So now if you exchange the meat for fish, right? Yotzer Bosa, Nechlusu Dogim. So now the fish assume the Kedusha Shviyas 
from the what? From the meat. What about bedogim yayin? He exchanged fish for wine. See the whole chain of events. Yotsu dogim nichvas yayin. So the Kedusha leaves the fish, goes on to the wine, Biyayin Shemen. He took the wine and exchanged it for oil, olive oil. Yosei Yayin, Nichta Shemen. Ho Ketzad. So what do we see from this? Achron, Achron, Nitvas, Bishvius. That whatever was the last thing to be exchanged for in the interim, that assumed the status of Shvius. Uperi Yatzma, Oser. But the fruits themselves, the produce themselves, that Kedusha can never be removed. Why? Because that's based on the Posuk. The produce, that will always remain in its original state. That cannot be removed. And what do we have to give so many examples? Give so many examples. Fish and f meat, fish, you know, every one of them. What, three wouldn't have been enough? Enough to see it? To, to, show, to prove this point? Right? Okay? Evidently not. Just want to bring it out very clearly. Achron, achron, nitas bishvius. And the fruits themselves are the same. More I ask now Moshe's question. What we said, what do we learn from Ovid Zorah? Let that be the, 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 the model case that the exchange of what? Of Yisrael No, the produce, the, the proceeds resume the status. Mercy, because we have the same halacha stated by Shvius. And if, if it would be the model to draw from it, what does there have to repeat it by Shvius? Evidently, these are the exceptions rather than the rule. Good. Tosis, Tosis, Tosis asked the question. So he says, but that's only good according to But what are El Mandi Yom and Malamdin Michael Meimar? Yeah, we had this before in, in earlier in the parak. Eshlech Levaravera, this and that. So we're, we're, the more cited a third source. Why? Because even though there's nothing superfluous in the Torah, sometimes the Torah repeats something to reiterate it. That's the argument. Is there nothing superfluous in the Torah? Therefore, even mentioning it again, if it's not necessary, it's tell me that's the exception. Well, no. The time to reiterate something, and therefore, if it's being reiterated, it's not superfluous. So we have two cases as the models of this principle. So let's learn out from, from Avodah Zor and Shviyas that what the Chalipe of Israel, no, that the exchange of Avodah Zor, the proceeds assumes the exact same status of the, of, of the Israel, no. On that, the says, Therefore, I need a third puzzle. But here, there is no third puzzle. So how do I know that it's limited to Avodah Zorah and Shviyas? On that, the Torah says, Mutik Sivu. Mutik Sivik. There are actually exclusions written, in, in not because it would be superfluous, rather because there's an exclusion which is implicit from that it's limited to this and it's not applied to other things. What does it say? Ksiv Hocho Ki Cheirem Hu. What does it say by Avodah? It is Cheirem. It is, ab it is or it's abominable. Yovel he, it is Yovel. What is Yovel? He's referring to the produce of Yovel. He ain't midiachrin alone. It's Isra no. It's limited to itself, but not elsewhere. So if we have two exclusions, you're not able to learn from them elsewhere. Okay, that's the conclusion of the Gemara. Now Tosa says something interesting. Yes, what he, what, he, what Alex brought up. Shneik sumbal kehar ein malamdin. Baram Tosus. Teimo. Firstly, I interesting, we have all the examples we have in Shas, where you have two psukim, which indicate it's the exception, both psukim were able to draw the exact same principle, right? For instance, Enshelech Baravera, whether you learn it from, uh, from here or there, we should say, or we say Yeshelech Baravera. The Mara says we have Yeshelech Baravera by Meila. By Meila we say Yeshelech Baravera, correct? If I tell a person to go purchase something, mistakenly, I instruct them to take money that was consecrated and he purchases the garment that I told him and he didn't know and I didn't know what's the aloha? the act of purchase who's liable for Milo the one who was sent who, who appointed him to be the agent so we see right that was the Morris question the Morris says because I have another puzzle it says by Dalit the it says Tvachu Mechoro right if you steal a sheep or you should steal an ox and you appoint an agent to slaughter the ox Although we normally say Eishlech Avera, but for Tvicha, for slaughtering the ox or the sheep, the thief is liable. And he has to pay Dal Vey. Why? Because just as Mechiras Ayyadei Acher, just as when you sell something, there's another party involved, 
Tficha could also have the liabilities also in the Yachir. So from this, I have two Psukim. So what do we learn? What are we saying? Ancient of let's learn. Yesh Lidvar, for me, if in fact the principle is correct, Yesh Lidvar, what does I have to repeat it by Dal Vey? What about according to Mahdi Omar? Opinion that two is not sufficient. Some more sites a third example that we say Yesh Lidvar, therefore, Shloshak Sum Bo Kechot, Amalamdin. But here we're limited to two. So Tosis over here has a question. But in all the examples you see throughout Shas, both Psukim tell me the exact same thing. Yeshle Varavero. Right? So therefore, if I have two or three, that tells me it's the exception rather than the rule. Now, Tosis asks a phenomenal question because when I'm learning from one, I'm not learning from the other. Temo. See, I'm not able. Am I able to learn the produce of the Sabbatal year from Avodos Kochovim? Avodos Kochovim is Yisura Hano. Right? Isuri no, the proceeds assume the same status. <coughs> but what is Isuri no? You're not permitted to benefit from it. you're permitted. Permitted to eat. Not only you're permitted to benefit, you're permitted to eat from it. Eat of it. So they're not comparable. You say, really, Avodos Zorah should be sufficient. How could it be sufficient? To learn from that, that the exchange assumes the identical status as the Avodah Zorah. So elsewhere also. What kind of marriage? There is Yisra Hano. Shviyas is not Yisra Hano. So maybe the proceeds of Shviyas, you're permitted to benefit from. They're not comparable. The Yishlomar, listen to this. Mikomogom, Nichtov Shviyas. Well, let us write Shviyas. Shviyas is less severe than Avodah Zorah. Correct? V'nesi Avodah Zorah mino. And let us learn Avodah Zorah from it. Just that Shviyas is less severe. The proceeds of Shviyas assume the identical status as the Shviyas. So, Avodah Zorah, which is more Chomor, definitely the proceeds of the Avodah Zorah should assume the same status. So, what does it have to say? Well, you said, Chayim Kamo, Chay Gavno, Mikri Shabish, Neksum Bon Kechot. The Kamaduch, he says, you find throughout Shas that many times, even though they're not identical, one, you couldn't learn one from the other, but since you could have learned the other from, from the other one, Therefore, the other one is superfluous. So what did I have to write to? Evidently, to tell us that these are the exceptions rather than the rule. Lobino she kol echod Each one does not be learned out of the other. Identical. What you can learn from one, you can learn from the other. Because now a situation here, you're not able to learn shviyas from Avodah Zorah. Avodah Zorah is Yisra, no? So maybe that's the reason why the exchange, the proceeds, have the same status as the Avodah Zorah. Now, Tos asks an, an interesting question. Vim Tomar, Akati, he looks if Avodos Kochovim lo aviadim nedir Avodos Kochovim mishvius. He says, I wouldn't know it. I, and let's say we'd only have shvius, and I wouldn't write Avodos Zora. I wouldn't know the extent. Why? Shari enu b'shovim the shvius achron nachron nitfas. Terrific, terrific. You know this. We just gave an example. What happens to shvius? You have the produce. You buy, exchange it for meat. So it's true, the original Avodah Zor, the original uh, Shviyas retains its status. You, trans you exchange meat for the produce of Shviyas, the meat is now as Kedusha Shviyas. Now you buy fish. What, about, what happens to the Kedusha on the meat? It transfers over to the fish. The fish to the wine, the wine to the oil. So we say it's always the last, whatever the last exchange was, that retains the Kedusha. But it, there was a continuous transfer in the interim. Avodah Zor, as many times as you exchange it, Every exchange retains its forbidden status and it passes on to the next. So again, so the Torah has to write Avodos Kochovim. Right? Because I couldn't learn Avodos Kochovim from what? From Shviyas. So neither are superfluous. So if neither are superfluous, so the Torah had to write it. So they're not the exceptions to the rule. Maybe it's the rule. So I should learn either from Avodos Zoro, I should learn from Shviyas, that Chalipe Yisra Anob, that whatever the exchange of Avodos Zoro is, or Yisra Anob, should assume the status, let it be Bosom Cholov, let it be uh, Sarnozi, or whatever it may be in the, Mish in the Mishnah stated. Petach Amor. It's a phenomenal question. You have the question, Howard? Yes. Okay, good. Akati lo kosev avrisko, lo havi yadino dina vuskochov mishviya sherei enum shovim, the shviya's achrin achrin nitfas, where he's shown him yotzim lechulin, all the exchanges in the interim, they, they, they actually, they, they transition to chulin, all the exchanges, they continuously retain their forbidden status. So, so therefore, how could I learn Avodah Zorah from what? From 
Shvius. Vafilu ma diyom achalibi, achalibi mutorin. Akati lo havei kishvius, shara achron nitfas. So he says something else based on the Pesukim, the Yishlom and the Chesiv, kicherimu, but that's the question. Let's go further. He does, he does, it's based on Pesukim. Right. I'm not going there. I'm not, I'm not going to discuss that. The main thing is the question. Okay, let's go further. Next Mishnah. I'm a Kaddish Bichumos. Person who marries a woman with Truma. What's Truma? We'll see in a minute. Let's say a person, a Yisrael, purchased Truma. Kohen is in hard times. He has enough Truma, he doesn't even know what to do with it. And if Yisrael goes, he buys up a fortune, a tremendous amount of Truma. It, could a Yisrael own Truma? He has to tithe his, his, his produce to give Truma. But once he's given the coin, he says, you know something, I'll sell it back to you. So who owns the Truma? Yisrael owns the Truma. If he wants to take the Truma and be a Makadosh woman with it, Shema Kodesh, it's definitely. So if the Mishnah says, Ha Makadosh be Truma, is it a Chidush that she's Makadosh? Truma is only an Isra Achila for, for a non Kohen. It's not permitted to eat it. But the benefit, he can benefit from it, correct? If it's his, if monetarily it's his, Ube Maisros. The Maisro you give to a, to a Levi. Take 10%, you give it to the Levi. Now the Levi goes and sells it to the Israel. His Maisro. Or he gives it, he gives it to the Israel. Or Truma gives it to Israel. It's his. So what's the Chiddush and Mishra? says, if you're Makarish with Maiser, she's Mekodesh. Also, there's no Chiddush. The Mordech is going to ask this. Uba Matonos, the Halacha is that if you slaughter an ordinary, non-consecrated animal, what are you supposed to give to the Kohen? You give Zroa, Lechayim, Vakeva. You have to give the Zroa, that's the, the right foreleg. And you have to give the tongue and the cheeks. And you have to give Kevas one of the stomachs. That's the, one of the gifts that you give to God. This is even a non-consecrated animal. That's one of the gifts, and after you separate it, it has no Kedusha. If the coin wants to invite you to partake of, of that meat, or he wants to give it back, give it back to you, it's yours. Okay? That's, that's one of the most gracious ideas. When you have a certain amount of sheep, wool, of a certain amount of sheep, you share the wool, you have to give a certain percentage to the coin. Let's say that wool. The wool has no Kedusha. That's not, let's say that Kohen would give you, uh, not Kohen, he would give it to somebody as a gift, and he would marry a woman with that. It's regular fleece. has no Kedusha. She's Mekodesh's. Ubemei Chatos. What about the water that's drawn to be used? It has to be, you need Maim Chayim. You need, the water has to be drawn from a, a living wellspring. And he takes that water. The water has no Kedusha. It wasn't yet put into any clay. He was drawn. Mei Chatos. The water that's meant to be used for the Chatos. It's the ash of the paraduma. We'll see in a moment. If the Kohen goes in any of these things, he marries a woman. She's mukodeshes. I feel Israel. If it was, let's say, Israel was 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 in possession of these items, mukodeshes. She's mukodeshes. I feel Israel. Now, the Mishnah cannot be understood just face value. Let's say the truma. Are we speaking about the truma that the Israel purchased? Or it's Truma even before he purchased it. A Kohen, a Yisrael goes, tithes Truma. And now he takes the Truma and he says to, uh, to this woman, Harei Mekodesh is the Truma. The Truma is not his. So why is she Mekodesh? Right? We'll see. It's not simple. Maybe she's Mekodesh. Now, who has the right to choose which Kohen? Whoever tithed it, he has the right. That's his right. Torah says, it's your right. What is that right? You know, that's that right... Does that give you a certain intrinsic ownership? Who has the right to make decisions, who to give and who not to give? That's the indication that's a certain degree of ownership. Once you give it away, that right has been expended. But until you expend that right, so that right, do, do I see it as a monetary interest? Or don't I see it as a monetary interest? If I see it as a monetary interest, so whatever the value of that interest is, I'm going to you with that interest, right? Even if you could sell the right, it has to be more. That, the question is, having that right, is that an indication that you have an intrinsic financial interest? Or well, no, the Torah gives you a right. Selling a right doesn't mean it has value. It doesn't mean anything. If I have, we speak, Maishe Sheni Momogavoa. Right? Maishe Sheni, we rule with Maishe Sheni Momogavoa. The Maishe Sheni, according to the mayor, it's considered God's. You cannot own it. 
And therefore, if you marry a woman, Maisha Shani, she's not married. Even though, let's say, a person's starving, and he won't, he'll pay anything for the Maisha Shani. You could sell it. Is she married? Because it could be sold on the open market. Could you marry a woman with it? You don't, you don't have any intrinsic ownership in it. And even the person who purchases it, although he may give you money for it, you have no interest. The buyer doesn't have an interest. The seller has no interest. Although you're able to gain, va sell it for value, but it's not, it's not yours. Right? So the same thing here. The right the Torah gives you to choose the coin, is that indication you have an intrinsic financial interest? So if you have an intrinsic financial interest, so that interest, I'm married with that interest. Now you have that interest to, to give to whichever coin you want. We say no. You have a right to choose the coin, but you have no financial interest in the Truman, the Miser. Therefore, you'll ain't been Kodeshes. So if the Mishnah tells me that if you're Makadish with Truma, she's in Kodeshes, why not tell me that you purchased, that you still purchased Truma? That's understood. It's his asset. Why shouldn't, he, why shouldn't she be Kodesh? There's no Kiddush. So we're speaking about the original tithing of the Truma before it was given to the Kohen. And he says, my right that I have in this Truma, I'm marrying you with that right. The Mishnah says, Mekodeshes. So that would be an indication that Tovas Hano, the right to give something, to do something, is an indication you have an intrinsic financial interest in the item itself. Right, exactly. So now it's interesting. There's a famous machlokas we've shown him. It's discussed in, uh, there's a right, there's a ritva here, but there's, it's, there's a machlokas over there. It seems to be from the Ran, the Ran Dorin, when it says you have the right in the Truma, what financial right, what's the value of that right? Is it, you have, the Torah says, until you release it, the Truma is fully yours? We'll see in a moment. Is it fully yours? The right to give it away, that means the Truma, you have total control over that Truma. That means the Truma, we, monetarily, we consider it yours. We consider it yours. Okay? What do we say? No. It's only the right in that is yours. But the majority is what, what we're going to speak about a case. A case where somebody goes and he damages. Let's say somebody, I have Truma, which I haven't yet given to God. Somebody destroys the Truma. Now the question is, the liability is to who? We'll discuss it, right? Seemingly, if you'll talk about a moment, and let's say all the Truma is yours. The financial interest, because the right gives you full right. So how much the mazik, the damager, how much does he have to reimburse to Yisrael? The full value of the truma? Or is it the right, which only means it's, it's less than the full value? It's the right, which is you have an interest in that. So we have to evaluate what, what that, that financial interest is. Is it the total or not? Yeah, exactly. It's not truma. It's not truma. It's mazik. We'll see. We'll see it in a moment. It's interesting with this, you know, you're able to understand. Tovas Ano. Yeah. Even though, see, the Gemara says that if a person is mazik truma, he's mazik truma, a person goes and destroys truma, so the reason why no coin has a claim against the mazik, because it's mom shame lotovi. Because the person says, you know, I could give it to any coin. Because I give it to whichever coin I choose. Who said you're the claimant? Mm -hmm. Who said you're the damage? Mm -hmm. I could choose one of thousands of coin. I don't have to give it to you. I mean, if, but if, according to the opinion, the Tova said no moment means it's fully mine until I give it. No, 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 no. So if that's the case, what do you mean, Mom Shane Lotovi? It's not yours till I give it. The, it seems from Mora Chulin, the Mora says, the moment you tithe Chum, it's moment coin. It belongs to the, to the Shevet Kuna. And therefore, somebody goes and destroys it. He doesn't have to reimburse any Kohen because there's no one Kohen who can claim it's his, it's, it's his Truma. Once the Kohen takes possession and you destroy it, so you're a damager. You have to, it's, it's his asset. But with him, pre he takes possession, prior to that, you owe him nothing. We'll have to continue this tomorrow.